Hello everybody, this is AK. I'm back. So the question of how much would we need in our retirement, you know, empty nesters, that means children all grown up and uh, we're retired and we're at home. And, um, one, and we wonder how much we would need by then on a monthly basis, right? So uh, I did some research and found an article published in 2019 that say Singapore seniors each each need at least $1,379 per month to meet basic needs. Nothing extravagant, just basic needs. So if we were to fast forward to 2023, and if we just use the inflation number of 5% per annum, um, in 2023, seniors would each need about $1,680 per month. Right, no children. Uh, of course, their parents long gone, and uh, let's assume that the family home is fully paid. One six eight zero per person. So, if you, you know, husband and wife, you multiply by two, um, that's almost three thousand four hundred dollars per month. Right. So, when I review that I was providing parental support uh, some time ago to the tune of $48,000 per year, uh, some people were incredulous. They said, wow, so much, you know, how, how can that be? And uh, well, I thought it was a reasonable amount. And uh, if this study holds water, you know, it, it supports my uh, thinking, right? And uh, earlier in this year, I responded to an article which was published in some website because the author asked how much money uh, did people in Singapore give their parents and he said that he gave his parents 10% of his monthly salary so and the amount was $400 a month so uh, he said 10% of his salary for $4,400 a month and um, I was uh, beaten by the blogging bug because I was I thought that was too little I mean if his parents were relatively well off quite rich then this $400 a month could have just been a token a monthly allowance to express his filial piety uh, then the, the, the method is okay because the parents didn't need the money um, but if his parents needed the money then $400 a month um, might have been too little yeah uh, it seems pretty arbitrary to me you know it's like you know you give the money to your parents and say oh hey hey don't say I don't give you any money okay then I'm giving you some money that kind of thing like you know um, well don't get me wrong it's better than not giving any money at all however it would be more meaningful if we were to find out what our parents needs might be financially and if we could do more to help I, I, I mean, if we are lucky, you know, we we would have parents that are very considerate and they wouldn't want to burden their children. And they might just tighten up their belts and make some pocket money doing some part-time work in retirement. You know, and they, they might not tell us their problems. But I think, you know, parents have labored to provide for us children till we became independent. In their golden years, it's our turn to make sure that they are at least financially comfortable. I, I think it is a responsibility, right? So, um, and simply giving parents money, uh, for those of us who do that, uh, might not always be the best way to help them either. Um, I think we show, show some concern and ask them about recurring bills and helping them to pay uh, large recurring bills might be a better idea, especially if we want to make sure that the money is being used properly. You know, some people are just not very good with money. You know, it comes to managing my money, they're not very good. And in this way, we get peace of mind. Both the giver and the receiver will get peace of mind. And um, when they don't have to worry about recurring expenses, hopefully, la, hopefully uh, they would have sufficient resources of their own to take care of their daily expenses. But like I say, uh, you know, it, what you see on screen, 1680 per person, uh, about $3,400 for elderly couple.
Um, if they do not have sufficient resources even to meet that after what we've done, uh, like helping them to pay for their recurring expenses and giving them uh, some pocket money, I think we would have to help them to defray the cost of their daily expenses as well. Right? So, um, what about me? Uh, I don't set aside a percentage of my passive income to give to my parents. Uh, I also do not give them money monthly, but I do give them relatively generous rate packets. Father's Day, Mother's Day, their birthdays, and that's the only cash I ever give them. And of course, in a, a recent blog, I say I'm going to start giving them ang pao's for Christmas as well, even though I'm not Christian, but, but it's all part of my plan to increase parental support. Um, and in a blog I published in August 2022, I reviewed uh, updated bar budget and like I said, I said I was going to set aside 48k per year from my passive income to provide financial support uh, for my parents. But most of the money would go to helping them pay recurring expenses, big recurring expenses uh, like H&S, insurance premium, property maintenance, property taxes. And up to recently, uh, the recurring expenses also included mortgage payments. And the final housing loan was uh, paid in late 2022, thankfully, and I paid the legal fees to discharge that mortgage as well. Right. So um, to be honest, I think $48,000 per year means $2,000 per person per month should be quite comfortable. Right, uh, and actually increased from forty thousand dollars in a year before in twenty twenty one, but I'm going to increase the amount again from forty eight thousand uh, dollars this year. Um, which is which was why I say I won't have much money uh to invest and to increase my passive income in future. Um, I might also increase the size of their rate packets in future lah. but I'm a worrier. I'm always worried about them because like I reviewed in a recent blog post, I say, I think I'm, I'll be okay because I'll probably outlive my parents and when they're no longer around, when they're gone, I would probably have a lot more passive income than I would ever need because I'll just be supporting myself, All right? Uh, but I'm worried about them now, right? Um, so readers know I've blogged about the importance of having an emergency fund and how my emergency fund was big enough to cover 24 months of routine expenses, not just for myself, but also my family, right? Um, and if we have set up an emergency fund a few years ago, we might have to relook at it because of inflation, right? We have, might have to check whether it's still as robust as before, right? That's just a point uh, that I want to make uh, as, as an aside. Um, how much money am I giving my parents in percentage terms? This number is going to be different from year to year since my passive income is going to be different each year, right? But um, the amount I'm going to give them won't vary very much, right? So if my passive income is more in a certain year, then the percentage will be smaller. But if my passive income should take a hit in a certain year, it's a lower amount, then of course what I'm giving them would be a bigger percentage of my passive income. So in 2022, passive income was about $206,000. So $48,000 of that amount is about 23%. So I'm giving them about 23% of my income, my passive income. Um, I'm not saying that everyone should give the, their parents 23% of your income, but that's, that's me, right? Uh, um, so that I think that you'll be comfortable. Um, we probably have different circumstances. I'm, in fact, I'm sure we have different circumstances. In some cases, very different circumstances. Uh, however, um, instead of asking how much money are you giving your parents monthly, Perhaps a more uh, appropriate question is, are you giving your parents enough money monthly? It's not how much you're giving, but whether you're giving enough, right? Um, so this is just me talking to myself and if AK can talk to himself, so can you. Bye-bye.